Hello, friends. Welcome to Trivia Over Tea, the quiz show podcast where we drink tea and play trivia. I am your host, Matthew Cook, and I'm here virtually with our guest scorekeeper, Mason Cook. Mason, how are you this morning? I'm doing very well. Just uh, got back last night from working a concert uh, here at Oxy. So, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to attack some trivia today. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, we're very happy to have you back as a uh, guest scorekeeper. Um, I would like to apologize to all of our listeners for not releasing an episode um, two weeks ago or last week, whenever it was that I was supposed to release an episode. That was my bad. And it was a combination of me not having contestants, me not having any questions, and me not having any time. And uh, <laughs> that, that led to no show. Um, but we have a show this week. We, we, we will have another show next Wednesday, May 3rd. And um, we probably won't have one on May 10th, but we probably will have one on May 17th and 24th. At least that's the plan at this time. We're going to try to get a little more frequent. Um, and one of the ways that we can get a little more frequent, sorry, I'm going to talk for a second, so bear with me, uh, is uh, through donations on uh, our Buy Me a Coffee uh, page. Thank you to those who have already donated um, a special shout out to um, the friend of our, our, our good friend Lucas um, uh, your stickers are coming I will put them in the mail today um, and if you would like to make a donation if you feel this podcast has benefited your life in any way uh, large or small uh, we would kindly ask that maybe you send us a few bucks uh, to uh, help with the uh, with the expenses associated with this show um, and those are now available on our buymeacoffee.com page, which is buymeacoffee.com slash trivia over tea. So thank you again. Really appreciate it. Soapbox over. And now we will get on with the show and meet our wonderful contestants. Wait, we have a question. <laughs> oh. Why is it buy me coffee if it's trivia over tea? Right. Okay. So when, <laughs> when you create a buy me a coffee page, you can... Uh, you can edit it to say whatever you want, like buy me a hot dog or whatever. And so I thought it'd be cute if I wrote, um, uh, buy me a cup of tea. And so really you're just buying cups of tea. Okay. Quote unquote. Okay. Um, you want to clarify. But the, but yes, the, it's important to clarify, but the website is buymeacoffee.com. Okay. So, gotcha. Uh, so I've, we've probably lost all of our listeners at this point. Um, <laughs> But uh, now we'll, we'll get back to why you're actually listening, um, which is not to hear me talk about that. It is uh, to hear me talk about some trivia. And so let's meet this week's contestants. First, we have Emma Grace. Hi, my name's Emma Grace. I'm one girl with two names and three times as much spirit as anyone else who's ever been on the show. <laughs> and I'm a sophomore at Pomona College studying history. And my pastimes include painting, backpacking, and singing with Matthew and Ava. Woo! <laughs> I have to say, I think that's probably the best intro anybody's ever given on this show. Oh my gosh. Um, thank you for being prepared. Uh, <laughs> really appreciate it. Um, so, uh, Ava. Uh, I think it's going to be hard to to top what uh, Emma Grace yeah. just did, but uh, I thought I give like the shot. worst introduction on this show. That way, we'll be on both extremes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hi, I'm Ava. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what are my what is the information about me? I'm a senior at Pomona, studying politics and Chinese. Um, I'm really tired right now. So I'm not used to waking up this early. So, but Matthew got me up for a good reason. Uh, <laughs> just so our listeners know. It is past 10 o'clock in the morning here. On the yeah, podcast. just for reference, this is this is not that early. I'm just a drama queen. <laughs> um, my hobbies include, what do they include? I love a good video game. I've been really into gaming recently. Um, I love a good coffee walk. I don't know if that's a hobby, but that's like my go-to on the weekend. I love a good walk into the village to go get coffee. And I do like singing in Glee Club. I'm going to Grace's singing Glee Club with Matthew and Emma Grace. Oh. Yeah. That's that. <laughs> that that was good too. That, okay, that was, that okay, was good. good. Too, I'm so, glad yeah. it wasn't the worst one. No, no, not not even not even close. 
Well, thank you, Emma Grace and Ava, for being here today. As with all of our regular episodes, we'll have four rounds of questions, each with a slightly different format. And so without further ado, Mason will explain the rules for round one. With pleasure. Uh, round one is our first general knowledge round. Correct answers are worth 10 points apiece. Each contestant will get five questions on a wide variety of subjects. All righty, Emma Grace, you're up first. Are you ready? You I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Question one. What is the only mountain in the continental United States that rises above 14,000 feet and is not located in either Colorado or California? A, Mount Hood, B, Mount Washington, or C, Mount Rainier? Mount Rainier. <laughs> That's correct. At 14,417 feet, it is the highest point in the state of Washington. I had to throw you a bone to start out here. Oh, uh, thanks. Question two. Chapter two of Marco Polo's book is one of the first non-Arabic sources that references what material, which is now commonly used in clothing? A, silk, B, leather, or C, cotton? Hey, I have actually read Marco Polo's book. <laughs> this is kind of bad if I don't know. Um, okay, wait, so it's what, what clothing does he reference? Uh, yes, uh, uh, one of the first non-Arabic sources that references what material, which is now commonly used in clothing, and the options are silk, leather, and cotton. Wait, okay, it's non-Arabic? Uh, one of the first non-Arabic sources that references this material. Mm. Oh, oh, Marco Polo's book is the non-Arabic source. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. It's silk, cotton, or leather? leather. Yeah. I feel like it's silk. I think you two are competing um, against each other and are not supposed to um, collaborate <laughs> necessarily on these questions. Um, Just saying. Um, definitely not leather. So it's either silk or cotton. And I'm going to say it's silk. Um, it was actually cotton. Uh, Mason, can you give a short explanation since you wrote this? Uh, yeah, so that uh, that particular chapter, actually he describes being in a field of cotton in uh, what is now uh, Northern Iran. And in fact, uh, the Arabic word, uh, it's cotton, and eventually became, you know, al Gadon in Spanish, which eventually became cotton in English. And uh, yeah, silk is referenced very heavily in Chinese sources, which are not Arabic sources. Is And uh, leather was already well in, at, in the European continent at this point. So, you know, uh, cotton, which uh, originally resided within, you know, the Arab world, world and then before spreading outward as a clothing material. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Mason. Uh, okay, moving on. Question three. What was the site of the first battle of the Civil War? A, Fort Sumter, South Carolina, B, Manassas, Virginia, or C, Antietam, Maryland? Okay, it's definitely not Antietam. Um, wait, I already forgot the other two. <laughs> A was Fort Sumter, South Carolina, and B was Manassas, Virginia. Okay. I feel like I've never heard of Manassas before. Hmm. Okay. You're giving me a very disapproving look. He's giving a like oh. I'm from the DC area type of look. Yeah, only because like my grandparents used to live about five minutes from the Manassas battlefield. But oh, but you wouldn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. You're sorry not from that you. Washington anyway. I'm sorry to your grandparents. <laughs> Fort, Fort Sumter, Manassas, Antietam. Those are your okay. options. Um, Fort Sumner or Manassas. Um, I don't know, man. I'm going to go Fort Sumner just because I've never heard of Manassas. <laughs> uh, that is correct. Uh, Fort, Sum Fort Sumter is located in Charleston Harbor, and the Battle of Fort Sumter took place on April 12th and 13th, 1861, and ended with the U.S. Army surrendering the fort to Confederate forces. The first and second battles of Manassas, or Bull Run, uh, would later take place in 1861 and 1862, respectively, and the Battle of Antietam 
would take place in 1862. So there you go. Question four. Which of the following stars is not a part of the Big Dipper? A, Merak, B, Polaris, or C, Al-Qaeda? Um, okay, Polaris is the North Star, right? And, oh shoot, I can't remember if the North Star is in the Little Dipper. <laughs> <different. laughs> We're talking about the Big Dipper here? The Big Dipper, yeah. Which of the following is not a part of the Big Dipper? Isn't it you look for the Big Dipper and then you follow the tail and that's where the North Star is? Or is that with the Little Dipper? I don't know. <laughs> Respectfully, I could um, tell. Okay. I, uh, wow. Well, I definitely, I don't know the other two stars, so... Like those don't even sound remotely like I've ever heard them before. So this is really going to be a shot in the dark. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I feel like you'd be trying to trick me by throwing Polaris in there. I don't know. I'm going to feel really stupid if the big Dip if Polaris is in the Big Dipper. But I'm just going to go for it. Polaris. <laughs> That is correct. Also, also known as the North Star, Polaris forms part of the Little Dipper. Okay. This, if this is what the astronomy questions are, I'm gonna die. Um, there's, there's one more astronomy question later on. I believe. I think I wrote another one. I did. Um, yeah. To be fair, I would have had no idea on this one, but. <laughs> I did look this up last night. So, <laughs> fun fact. Uh, and finally, question five. The 1926 film, The Pleasure Garden, was what filmmaker's first movie? A, Orson Welles, B, Frank Capra, or C, Alfred Hitchcock? Well, Alfred Hitchcock is the only person I know out of those three people. What was the name of the movie? The Pleasure Garden. It does sound like it could be a good mystery film. <laughs> um, so <laughs> you know, you know, go Alfred Hitchcock. That's correct. It was him. <laughs> uh, and he would go on to direct such films as Psycho, Vertigo, and Rear Window, among many, many, many others. Uh, so there you go. Okay, Ava, are you ready for your five questions? <laughs> she said a good, a good example. <laughs> oh. Okay. Here we go. Question one. Which of the following is not a German definite article? A, I, my, my brother wrote this question, so you're just going to have to. Oh, yeah, sorry. A, DIN, D-I-N, B, D, D-I-E, or C, DES, D-E-S. Come on, you can dust. Wait, what did you say? A German infinitive? Article. Definite article. Definite. I don't even know what definite article means. I don't know. I took Latin for like five years and I still don't know what any of this means. Um, in English, the, uh, the definite article is the. Oh. Think of all the German we just sang. I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> can you repeat the, the options? Yeah. <laughs> A is din, D-I-N. B is D, D-I-E. And yeah. C is des, D-E-S. Okay. Um, and you said which one is not? Correct. Yes. Okay. Well, I know D is D, like it's like the um okay, and then did and des. Das do des. <laughs> I'm gross. <laughs> oh <laughs> dang, if I remembered all the translations that Donna gave us, this would be a lot more helpful. Um oof. I'm going to go with din. That's correct. I don't think that's a word, <laughs> right, Mason? That was a shot in the dark for real. <laughs> yeah, that's not a word. That Dane is a word. Yeah. Or din is not, because uh, the German definite articles are D, der, or Dame, Dane, and des. Dang. And, and das. Dane, das. Also. Das. Ooh, on das. Yeah, das. Very yeah. good. 
So the okay. audience reference, my only actual language that I know outside of English is Chinese. So this was like a really a shot in the dark, TBH. Yeah, yeah. and you killed every it. single, and the fun thing is every single one of those words in English means the. Yeah. Okay. It's German, it's always trying to make things complicated. Uh, thank you, Mason. Uh, question two. A common funeral piece today is Spiegel im Spiegel, a duet for piano and violin by what composer? A, Jean Sibelius, B, Arvo Pert, or C, oh boy, Hildur, <laughs> Mason, I'm sorry, Mason wrote this question. Mason, <laughs> who is this third composer? I believe it's uh, Hil uh, Hildur Gutnadotter. <laughs> and 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 them oh yeah. and them um, <laughs> yeah tbh i probably shouldn't have put on the questionnaire that i had any knowledge about classical music no here's here's the thing here's here's what happens <laughs> on on every like thursday or friday depending on how behind <laughs> i am i text mason and i say hey can you please send me five questions for the show um without any and Mason doesn't get any knowledge about like who the contestants are and what their right. what their areas of expertise are. One of Mer Mason's areas of, of expertise happens to be classical music because Mason, like me, is a music major. And so <laughs> Mason almost always writes at least one very difficult music oh, question. Yeah. All of Mason's questions are very difficult. Um, Mason wrote the Marco Polo question from the... Uh, <laughs> from crazy. emma grace's set okay and then the okay. German one, and this one so and don't worry you both have more mason questions coming later on in the show beautiful, no. so. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. um okay so you said the name was Sh spiegel spiegel uh, im spiegel. spiegel yeah spiegel Spie im spiegel spiegel im spiegel okay i'm gonna go from a linguistics point of view based on the names the languages of the names of the composer i'm gonna say c the guy that you couldn't pronounce because that sounds like either a german or a dutch name um it was actually pert um, yeah our, actually our... that last name is neither german nor dutch it's icelandic might be <laughs> might be yeah i would never yeah no, there were no german or dutch composers there sibelius is finished Pert is Estonian and Gutna daughter well, is Icelandic. I think Icelandic. this is really showing off that I have zero knowledge of composers. Yeah, but, I was um, just going off the name, how the name sounded. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, that's, uh, that's fair. Yeah, but but Spiegel and Spiegel is like kind of a classic Pert style of piece. It's very, you know, well, you know, very calm. Has a lot of these very open in uh, harmonies and chords. Uh, if you listen to it, the piano is just. You know, just repeating kind of the same theme, uh, quarter notes over these giant long violin tones. It's a really beautiful piece, and uh, yeah, it's it's why it's become so popular. He also wrote uh, a, another great choral piece that has made an appearance for uh, larger funerals, and that's his. Um, oh, what's the name of it? I, um, I, I forget. Oh, it's his it's um, attitudes. That's what I've sung. No, no, not that. It it's the. Uh... <laughs> well, if you think about it, um, I'll, I'll think about. It, but but it, it was the piece that he wrote for the Madrid train bombing. That like oh. you know what I'm talking about, right? I don't know the piece, but I I know the event. <laughs> at any rate, I think we should get back. to I the got trivia. that question incorrect. At any rate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, quick note: Gutna daughter. You know Joker and Chernobyl. She wrote the soundtracks for those. Oh. So, okay. yeah. Oh, Gutna daughter. I didn't hear what you said. That Gutina makes daughter. sense. Gutna daughter. Gutna daughter, yes. Daughter and John, or yeah, daughter and son or something. Daughter, something like, yeah, is Icelandic. That's oh. the most I can think about that. Anyway, question three. In 1954, nationwide field trials of Jonas Salk's, or sorry, Jonas Salk's uh, pol uh, polio vaccine began with children being vaccinated at Franklin Sherman Elementary School, located where? A, New York City, B, Lexington, Kentucky, or C, McLean, Virginia? <sighs> Said this is polio vaccine. Mm -hmm. And this is an elementary school. Can you repeat the name of the elementary school? Franklin Sherman. Oh. 
Sherman. 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 Oh, I don't. New York City, Kentucky, or Virginia. I feel like Matthew's trying to throw me off with the Virginia one. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, I guess my thought process with this is that I don't know who Sherman is, but that's sounding like a more Northeastern type of name, perhaps. I don't know. I could be completely wrong on this, and I could be really embarrassed if this is, ends up being in Lexington, Kentucky, but I feel like I might be choosing between New York and McLean. Um, I'm going to go with McLean because I'm a DC girl and I got to stay stay with my roots. Um, as you should, because the correct answer is McLean, Virginia. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> the elementary school is a part of Fairfax County Public Schools, um, okay. which uh, um, an entity of which many people who have participated in on this podcast are intimately familiar, including two of the people who are currently on this show. <laughs> anyway, question four. In 1961, Roger Maris broke Babe Ruth's single season home run record by hitting how many home runs? A, 57, B, 61, or C, 75? Damn. I don't know that much about baseball. Um, 57, 61, or 75. Dang, 75 feels too like like even or like too too like on the on the nose. Like like that's like that doesn't feel enough. That doesn't feel too random. Nice. <laughs> too nice of a number. That is too nice of a number. <laughs> Multiple of five, like. Damn, or divisible, but I don't even know my math. Um, okay, I guess I'm gonna rule out 75 because that feels too perfect. Um, and if it is that, then good for that man. Um, 61 <laughs> or 57. Um, I'm gonna say 57. It was actually 61. Damn. Uh, uh, Babe Ruth's record from 1927 stood at 60 home runs. Whoa, uh, Maris's yeah. mark has since been surpassed several times, including last year by Aaron Judge, who hit 62 Whoa. home runs. Wow. That's crazy. Okay. And finally, question five. Which of the following Washington, D.C. attractions is not a part of the Smithsonian Institution? A, the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, B, the National Zoo, or C, the Hirshhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden? Part of the National Smithsonian. Okay. Dang. That's so crazy because I thought you were going to say something that was like obvious, like one that you have to pay for. Well, but one of these you do have to pay for. You have to pay for? Okay. Okay. Um, well, Pretty sure. Okay. <laughs> I know you don't have to pay at the Hirshhorn because I've been there a bunch of times and it's a really cool art museum. And I think that it would make sense that it would be part of the Smithsonian. Um, Holocaust Museum, you also don't have to pay for. They recommend a $1 donation per person, but that would be tactically covered under, it's still like government funded. Um, and now I'm, why am I forgetting if the National Museum have to pay for that or not? Like, dang. Oh, I haven't been ah, I see, okay. So um, <laughs> this, the, the, the one that's not, um, is a ticketed um, place, but tickets are free. Okay. Oh, is a ticketed place, okay. Well, yeah, that's the, I believe that's the Holocaust Museum then. Um, Maybe I gave it away. Yeah, no, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, okay, no, now that I'm thinking about it, we had like a National Zoo sticker on my car as a kid and I'm almost positive it had a Smithsonian logo on it. So I'm gonna go with the Holocaust Museum. That's correct. Yes, <laughs> um, it is located nearby the cluster of Smithsonian Museums on the yeah. National Mall, but it is an independent entity. That makes sense, yeah, so. okay. I think the zoo one was there to maybe flip me up, trick me because um, it's not in the location of the National Mall, but. Yeah, and it's like, there. you know, it's not a museum per se. Yeah, okay, but, that makes but, sense. I also yeah. remember when I went there on a field trip in high school and it was free and then I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> I've also been there on a field trip, but that was many, many, many moons ago, uh, <laughs> long before high school. Um, anyway, 
uh, that's where we're finally at the end of round one. Um, yeah, so much. <laughs> um, Mason, can you please give us a score update? I'm going to say this might be the first two part episode in the history of trivia over tea. Um, but at the end of round one, uh, both tests dropped a strong start, uh, 40 to 30 in favor of Emma Grace. All righty. So now it is time for round two. So Mason, can you please tell us the rules? Uh, gladly. Uh, round two, it's a directed round. So uh, both contest, uh, each contestant will get five questions worth 20 points each. All the questions will be on the same subject. However, if you get it wrong, your opponent can bounce it back for 10 points. Oh, wait, I can answer it if she gets it wrong? Correct. Yes. Oh, yes. Shoot, I got to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I'm very excited, actually, for the topic that I have for the two of you. Um, I had a lot of fun writing these questions. Um, there was a there's a very famous person who was baptized on April 26th, which is the day that this podcast is being released, um, because we don't actually know his actual birth date, and so the baptismal date is as close as we get. Um, his baptism was April 26th, 1564. This person, of course, is William Shakespeare, and so um, basically, what's going to happen is I'm going to give you a question that's like describing one of his plays and you tell me which play it is. So, Emma Grace, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay, question one. Duke Frederick and his exiled brother, Duke Senior, are merely players on stage in what Shakespearean comedy? Um... Think of the famous quote that I'm referencing. What that that life is a state. Near, nearly play, yeah. Plays. And what play is that from? Um, I know the quote, but I don't know the play. <laughs> okay. okay, comedy or tragedy? I said comedy. Uh, I said comedy. Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, comedy. Okay. And these are with two dukes. Um, well, okay, let's see. They're, and they're, okay. <laughs> In A Midsummer Night's Dream, they're literally playing players. So I feel like that could be a situation where they would say that sort of thing. So that's my answer. Uh, no, it's not Midsummer Night's Dream. Ava? Oh my God. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's do some thinking. Um, uh, I wish I knew more comedies. E. I yeah, will say I, it was harder to write questions about the comedies for whatever yeah. reason, because I, I think I the tragedies are more well-known. Yeah. Also, I kind of feel like the comedies low-key kind of all have like same plot, you know, like there's some cross-dressing, some mistaken, yeah, some mistaken identity, and then yeah. you know, there's a marriage. So. Yeah, I'm, I, I can't, I'm not even gonna be able to answer this one. I thought was the Midsummer Night Stream was the only one I knew. <laughs> okay, um, this one is As You Like It. Oh. Um, and my explanation is, I was attempting some clever wordplay on the famous monologue, all the world's a stage and all the men and women are merely players, which is found in act two, scene seven of the play. So there you go. Oh, but all, isn't all the world's a stage also in Midsummer Night's Dream? Or is that just- like I one? don't believe so. <laughs> Dang, my bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, it is not. It is only in As You Like It. Oh. Question two. The titular character delivers the famous St. Crispin's Day speech before the Battle of Agincourt in what history play? Um, well, the only, I've only seen Julius Caesar. I haven't seen any of the, or read any of the Richards or any of those. So I'm going to say Julius Caesar. No, not Julius Caesar. I'm pretty sure that's a tragedy, not a history. Um, 
Oh, there's a difference. Yes. <laughs> because <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Ava. Oh God, this is a Shakespeare history play. I'm like forgetting what is a tragedy and what's a history. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? Yeah. <laughs> the, the titular character delivers the famous St. Crispin's Day speech before the Battle of Agincourt in what history play? Dude. Honestly, I'm just going to go with the one like battle-related one that I know, and I'm going to say Othello. Um, no, that's also a tragedy. That's a tragedy, right? That's my thought. I would say like yeah. Richard III. Or I something. don't know any other ones. Uh, yeah, th this one is Henry V. Oh, Henry. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, the Henry. Battle of Agincourt uh, was a major victory for the English in 1415 during the Hundred Years' War. Uh, Henry V is the last in a um, tetralogy preceded by Richard II, Henry IV, Part One, and Henry IV, Part Two. There you go. Question three. Perhaps the most <laughs> famous <laughs> stage direction ever, Exit Pursued by a Bear, is found in Act Three, Scene Three of what play? This is so embarrassing. <laughs> um, there's a bear on stage. Yes. A bear. <laughs> and is this a comedy or a tragedy? Um, this one, um, this I is believe, a comedy. Yeah, but it's also sometimes labeled as a problem play. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> if that helps. I don't know if it does. Oh my parents would be so disappointed in me right now. Um, bear? I, why do I not remember there ever being a bear in a Shakespeare play? Literally. Um, well, uh, the, the bear the bear isn't... Is it like, a real bear? The, the bear isn't it, like a character, but yeah. this, this, <laughs> this, the, the character who exits and is pursued by a bear... Um, he exits and then and is pursued by a bear and then is pursued by a bear and dies off stage. But Die. the bear it does not factor into the story other okay. than, and, and is not referenced other than the fact that this character exits and is pursued by a bear. Okay. So if there's bear, it probably means they're in the woods somewhere. Mm -hmm. So... Once again, <laughs> the only play I can think of that's in the woods is a Midsummer Night's Dream, but I don't think anybody dies of that. So let's see. What else could they be in the woods? Wait, okay. Cymbeline's a tragedy, right? Yeah. Yes. Um. Okay, so this is can't be Cymbeline, right? No. Okay. Um. What? Twelfth, twelfth night, two gentlemen of Verona. Um, <laughs> um, Taming of the Shrew. You're helping me by giving me at least Shoot. some guessing points. But no one dies. No one dies in those. Those are all happy marriage comedies. Um, someone dies, the yeah. bear kills them. Yes. They get mauled by a bear. Off stage. <laughs> wow. I literally have no clue. Um, what? <laughs> um, I'm just going to say, um, you know, I'll say Taming of the Shrew because some of the, some of the arguments between, <laughs> some of the arguments, you know, they sting as much as getting mauled by a bear. <laughs> better to go at it not not a not an unreasonable argument um <laughs> however it's not the taming of the shrew okay. um ava do you know i'm literally gonna use one of the <laughs> options emma grace gave me okay wait. what did you say two gentlemen of verona <laughs> no uh this <laughs> is uh this is the winter's tale oh i don't even i didn't even know that existed yeah <laughs> Frankly, yeah, I, is... only, I only know this because in 10th grade, my class did a shortened version of The Winter's Tale, and I played somebody. I was not Antigonus. Um, 
I who think Trevor Purdy's yeah. love interest was, and I can't remember the name of the character. But anyway, this is The Winter's Tale. And Antigonus is pursued offstage by a bear and dies. Why is that so funny? Yeah, I should also note that uh, that is the only death within, a winter, within The Winter's Tale, uh, uh, which is not exactly standard for Shakespearean plays. As uh, also in that very same classroom, uh, there was a great chart that had listed all of the different ways people die in Shakespeare's plays. And it was a very long chart. It was a oh. very long chart. You know what's funny? I was actually thinking about that very chart while I was writing these questions. Um, this, but, but this would have been before that chart was put up because I'm pretty sure it was Miss Thrift. Yeah, that, who, that's who put correct. that it was not Mr. Rome. Anyway, sorry, that was a deviation. Um, <laughs> Hello, Mr. Rome and Ms. Thrift, if either of you are listening. Probably not. Anyway, uh, question four. Uh, what character mutters the phrase et tu, Brute, after being fatally stabbed toward the end of his eponymous tragedy? Uh, it's Julius Caesar. It is Julius Caesar, yes. Um, <laughs> I was like hoping, like, I was like, maybe I'm a great doesn't know this, but you're like, oh. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, Caesar is talking to his friend Marcus Brutus after recognizing him as one of the friend. assassins. Yeah, run to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and finally, question five. In the musical Kiss Me Kate, the show within the show is what Shakespearean comedy about the courtship of Petruchio and Katarina? Hmm. My hint is that you've, you've, you've said the name of this comedy. <laughs> In okay, your so it's either Two Gentlemen of Rona or um, Twelfth Night, because I think those are the only two other ones I said. Slay. Right? Give me some facial <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying not to telegraph anything. Okay, well, I better guess correctly, because otherwise Abe is going to get this right for <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Um... Based on, okay, is Two Gentlemen of Verona the one where it's, it's Sebastian, wait, that, that, is that the one with Sebastian and the, and the sister pretends to be Sebastian because then it'd be like two gentlemen like, because they're like two, two of them. Lines. There's a lot of it up. I think Sebastian is in Twelfth Night. Okay. <laughs> so then. Is, is, am I correct, Mason? Mason. <laughs> Earth to Mason. Yeah, yeah, yes, that is correct. Twelve. Sebastian is a Twelfth Night character. Okay. I just, I was. Thank you. Okay, so then it's not Twelfth Night because we're talking about Katarina and Pistachio. Petruchio. <laughs> Petruchio. <laughs> so, Close. Um. So then I'll say two gentlemen of Rona. Uh no, Ava. Twelfth Night. No, no. This is the taming of the shrew. What he said. Yeah. Dang it. Yeah. Um, oh, and... did we both slip up on that one. That was like also an easy question <laughs> based on protocol. <laughs> this is pitiful showing. Yeah. When <laughs> the the big the, uh, in Kiss Me Kate, um, Petruchio's big song in the uh, in the second act, I think it's in the second act, is "Where's the life that late I led." And one of the lines is, um, and what do you do a quarter to two with only a shrew to kiss? I may or may not have sung that for my junior recital. Um, oh my gosh. I would there, love to see that. There may or may not be a recording out there. There oh is definitely God. a recording out there. There's definitely a recording <laughs> out there. Anyway, um, Ava, are you ready for your five Shakespeare questions? <laughs> Wait, mine are Shakespeare too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Everyone's are. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm ready. Actually, I'm not ready. I'm not gonna get any of these, but yeah, let's okay. go. I I think you might know. I I hope I hope maybe one or two might be gettable. Okay. Question one: To be or not to be? That is the question asked by whom? Asked by whom? Good grammar, Matthew. I Thank you. you. Why are you? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I have like zero Shakespeare knowledge. Oh, to be or not to be. That is the question. Oh, 
Damn it, I'm just gonna steal this from me for real. Which character? Yeah. Okay. It's the title character. The title character. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Macbeth? No. Emma Grace. Hamlet. Hamlet, yeah. Oh, um, that's Hamlet too. I was picturing Hamlet in my head with the Hamlet that I like. Said. Yeah, this is Hamlet. Um, this comes from Act Three, Scene One of Shakespeare's longest play, which is Hamlet. Yeah, we're just gonna um, this. Frankly, I thought that was going to be the easiest of these. Kind of okay, well, this um, is what we're in for then. Yeah. Anyway, question two: uh, <laughs> What what titular king delivers the famous soliloquy? tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow after hearing of his wife's death in what shortest Shakespeare tragedy? Oh. I know this one. Dang <laughs> it. This is when Emma Grace is going to like tear me apart. <laughs> um, the Kings. There's lots of Kings. King Richard. King Henry. King Lear. Mm. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. There's lots of other kings too. It's not just the king books. <laughs> the king books. <laughs> Damn. Um, and, and also, like, not all of the like titular kings have king. Yeah. In the title. In the title, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said shortest Shakespeare play. Uh, shortest Shakespeare oh. tragedy. Tragedy. Okay. And this one has a lot of death. Lots of death. <laughs> silly, silly. As as actually most of the tragedies do, but um, all of them. I really don't know any of this. Well, maybe guess a tragedy that you know. A tragedy that I know. Ah. I don't know any. <laughs> um, I don't know. King Lear. No, Emma Grace. It's Macbeth. This one's Macbeth. Wait, that was the one. Can I tell you how I know? This? Wait, what, what did you say, Emma Grace? I want to say, can I tell you how I know this? Please. Because. Um, Hamilton quotes it when <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I know tomorrow, it. Tomorrow keeps on this petty precipice from day to day. <laughs> Jefferson's picked up. <laughs> I think you'll know the Scottish tragedy tragedy without me having to name the play. <laughs> there Dang. you go. Um, I know it because I was in Macbeth, um, as a junior in high school. Wow. As I've never Lennox. acted in it That's probably so. also why I'm really <laughs> struggling with this. Many, many months ago. Okay, uh, question three. Um, <laughs> so what Shakespeare history is also sometimes called a tragedy and follows the titular hunchback king as he is, quote, determined to prove a villain? I don't even know. Hunchback is the key word here. <laughs> Quasimodo. Literally, literally, <laughs> that's all I can think of. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that it's not Quasimodo. <laughs> the girl in the other room, the same room is like staring at me right now. Uh, <laughs> dude, I don't know anything. I'm so okay. At least Emma Grace probably won't get. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know this one. It's his, it's historical. historical. See, I know the historical plays the absolute worst. worst. <laughs> yeah. Okay. King Richard. Um, I'll I'll prompt you on Richard. Okay. Richard the. Oh, wait! I don't even remember the numbers. <laughs> Dang it. The third? 
Richard the Third. Oh. Yes. Uh, a horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. Oh. Yeah, I guess you're right. That's honestly a win in this. Yeah. Um, and uh, my fun fact for this is that it, this is really all. This podcast is just about me, as as we all know. Um, and in the play, in the play, noise is off. Um, the character Lloyd Dallas is directing Richard III when he is forced to return to the production of Nothing On in Act Two to deal with some situations. And as a senior in high school, I played Lloyd Dallas in Noises Off. And in his uh, monologue, um, one of the problems that he describes uh, with his production of Richard III is that um, Richard III has come down with a back problem. <laughs> I should note that this also has the unintended consequence of making Matthew the first person to perform Hamilton at the Kennedy Kennedy Center. But uh, yeah, that's no. a long story. That, oh, that is literally, a, I've, heard I've heard this. I've heard this. I may have. I probably mentioned this like last week because I talk about this <laughs> all the time. Yeah, I, I have like I have like three good stories, um, and I just rotate you know them through for uh, whoever whoever will exactly. Remember. You know, although, you know, I used to be that way, although I recently gained a fourth in that. You can find me on Wikipedia, though not on my own page, but that's a different story. Okay, know. anyway, let's get back to me. Um, and <laughs> uh, question four. Uh, what Shakespearean comedies, two pairs of lovers, are Beatrice and Benedict and Hero and Claudio? Oh. Emma Grace okay. looks like. She knows this Wait, one. Wait, like because Emma Grace mentioned this because I said it earlier. You did, um, yes. Um, two gentlemen of Verona. No, Emma Grace. <laughs> Dang it! I want my memory so bad. Not that one. The shrew. Wait, what did you Wait, say? Beatrice and Benedict are taming of the shrew. Oh no, they're as you like. Hold, right. hold on. What, uh, okay, what, what, what is your answer? Twelfth night. I'm switching it up. <laughs> I don't know what your answer is, but you got it. Okay, hold hold on. Okay, so Ava, your answer is twelfth night. I'm gonna switch mine to twelfth night because, like, why not? Okay, that's also wrong. Okay. Emma Grace, what is Good your luck. answer? Beatrice and Benedict is taming of the shrew. Right? No, Be Beatrice and Benedict is. Like it? No. Wait, it's much, what? Much ado about nothing. Oh my God. Okay, at least yeah. we both like, embarrassed ourselves. That's <laughs> so embarrassing. Yeah. I've seen this uh, one too. That's actually one that I have I'm seen. I'm sorry, mom and dad. I read this in eighth grade, I think. I have no idea. Um, that's, the one, that's the one with Professor Snape. What? Alan uh, Rickman? Right? Is he in the... <laughs> Mason, can you check if Alan Rickman's in the... <laughs> Wait, the way you said Professor Snape and not Alan Rickman is killing me. Oh. Uh, uh. Yeah, this one's much to do about nothing. Uh, okay. And finally, question five. I I hope that somebody will get this one right. <laughs> oh God! Means Puck, Oberon, and Tatiana are fairies found in what Shakespearean comedy? Come on, you got Midsummer it. Night's you got Dream. Dream. Yes, yes. I did read this one in high school. Okay. Well done. Out of five, baby, <laughs> and one of them was a complete guess with Richard. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Well. That's just so disappointing. Yeah, my first one was the easy one, and I said, "Well, I still don't know." This, this, uh, this has been a very, very long round. I, I can't believe we still got two more rounds to go. This episode on record for real. Um, uh, Mason, uh, can you give us a score update, please? Uh, so, clarification point. Uh, actually, two clarification points. Uh, Alan Rickman from what I can tell, was never actually in Much Ado About Nothing. He was in various productions of Love's Later is Lost, The Tempest, uh, As You Like It, uh, Troyes and Cressida, and uh, Hamlet and Antony and Cleopatra, but he was never actually in a production of Much Ado About Nothing. Uh, also, <laughs> the histories are the plays about the actual English kings. They're like actual histories, whereas the tragedies aren't. They're yeah. like mythical figures and stuff. I know that much. <laughs> yeah, I really know. Yeah. Um, so fun clarification point there. Uh, so, right. Also, the did, score. The score. Did, uh, did Ava get that last question right? I was kind of busy looking at Alan. Oh, Ava, Ava did. Oh, fantastic. Uh, 
Okay, so in that case, uh, we we go even on the round uh, because while Emma Grace didn't do well on her questions, she did fairly well on Ava's questions. <laughs> and uh, that that allows us both to have uh, 40 points apiece from that round. And thus, the score right now, uh, Emma Grace at 80 and Ava at 70 going into round three. All righty. Oh, like now it is time for round three. So Mason, can you please tell us the rules? Uh, gladly. So uh, round three is second general knowledge round. This time, correct answers are worth 30 points apiece. And if you get it wrong, your opponent can bounce it back for 15. <gasps> All righty. Uh, Emma Grace, are you ready? So ready. Okay. Question one. What interstate highway would you take to travel from Seattle to Tacoma, Washington? Five. That's correct. Uh, it is the main north-south route through the state of Washington. Question two. The pronoun vosotros is only present in the European dialect of what Romance language? Vosotros? Yeah. Okay. Romance languages. English? What are you going to have? <laughs> Is it a romance language? English is <laughs> not a romance language. Spanish, French, Italian, Romanian. Oh, shoot. I, I Aren't there five? Romanian. Spanish, French, Italian, Romanian, and... Well, Mason, is Romanche a, a romance language? Yes. Yeah. Romanche there are is also a... way, way more. more than five romance languages. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> Is this going to be like an obscure one? Because I only know the the. Um... I I think you should name one of the. I, I think you should name one of the ones that you named. Oh, okay, good. Um, <laughs> what was the word again? Vosotros. V o s o t r o s. V o s o t r o s. Vosotros, and it's a pronoun. Yeah, it's only it's present pronoun. in the European dialect of what Romance language. So Spanish? That is correct. I knew this okay. one. I knew this one because I on TikTok yeah. get all these like videos complaining about students learning Spanish having to learn vosotros. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were I was always told that I didn't have to learn it because people who speak yeah. Spanish. North America. I know. I'm I'm taking Spanish right now and you're taking my, Spanish? Yeah, it's my I need I needed one more course and <laughs> one more non-music course. And Spanish 101 was open, and it didn't conflict with anything else, so I'm taking that. Um, I didn't but know yeah, you were taking Spanish. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it, it in there. It's a, it's a second person plural pronoun. It's y'all. Y'all. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. It usually gets replaced almost always in Latin American Spanish, you know, yeah. with By either aesthetics. nosotros or um ustedes yeah yes. but thank you mason question three in 1974 what singer songwriter had a number one hit with a love song he wrote for his wife annie martell um well <laughs> john, <laughs> john denver that is correct it is <laughs> yeah, any song any song yeah oh damn yeah. good I'm, I'm glad that that you picked up on the clues in the question. Uh, question four. In 1988, the Soviet uh -huh. government had the um, Ivankiv Rayon absorb the Rayon named for what town that was the site of a major nuclear meltdown in 1986? Chernobyl? Yes. Okay. I was hoping you wouldn't get that one. I didn't know. That was, that was, that was exhausting and it was entirely my fault. <laughs> no, Mason. that was a lot. Like, I feel like the yeah. extra information in the beginning yeah, was no, the, the question. The Ryan is effectively like the county, like their oh. version of the county. Oh. Okay. So basically Chernobyl used to be its own independent Chernobyl Ryan. And then of course, when, you know, the nuclear meltdown happened, they had to evacuate everyone. And so two years after that, they just merged what was the Chernobyl Ryan into the Ivanki Ryan, which eventually, like uh, two years ago, the Ukrainian government and merged that into, you know, they did a whole massive administrative reform where they merged that and a bunch of other Ryans together to make much bigger sub oblast uh, subdivisions. Very good. Thank you, Mason. 
Um, and now I know what a rion is uh, and that it's not radian or radian. Anyway, uh, finally, question five. What musical by Stephen Sondheim follows unmarried Bobby as he interacts with his married friends on and around his 35th birthday? Oh, my. I don't even know Sondheim musicals. Okay. Um, well, my sister is doing the lighting tech for Sondheim on Sondheim right now. <laughs> Um, Bobby, Bobby Strong. Not that Bobby. Okay. Not Bobby Strong and not Bobby Howlett. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't either. Um, but okay, so he's unmarried and all his other friends are married. Yeah. That's like the 35, whole. Thirty-five, man, you're running out of time. <laughs> 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 um. While while you're musing, um, speaking of getting old, um, I just want to shout out to the uh, the clerk at at uh, the cashier at Trader Joe's last night who um, checked me out and saw that my ID indicated that I was twenty five years old, um, and he told me I was young, and that made me very <laughs> happy. <laughs> and he told me I looked young too. Aww. Well, I yeah. mean, you do still go to Pomona. No, my so. mom definitely <laughs> thought you were just some like random Pomona student at Angel E. Plum. So I don't think oh, she's good. pointing good. it down as like yeah. not a student, yeah. a community member. Yeah, <laughs> definitely don't look like a community member. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, let's see. This is going to be so wrong, but I'm just going to say Guys and Dolls. <laughs> Which is not a musical written by Stephen Sondheim. Uh, Ava? Oh, God. Ah. Um. <laughs> Frank Lesser, I believe, was the composer for Guys and Dolls. Oh, my God. Okay. 35-year-old man. Yeah. Who has all of his besties who are married. Yeah. That's crazy. That sucks to be him. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm not even going to answer. I don't want to embarrass myself because I just don't know this. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how this became a theme for this show, but I've also been in this show. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, this is company. Oh, oh um, I didn't even know. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I, uh, and it's an example of a concept musical that lacks a linear plot. I was Larry. For what it's worth. Larry. <laughs> also, Matthew, you yeah. are correct. Uh, Guys and Dolls. The music was indeed by Frank Lesser. Yeah. Thank you. I believe I had that. Ava, oh, are you ready for your five questions? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Question one. What interstate highway's eastern terminus appears shortly after crossing into Washington, D.C. on the Theodore Roosevelt Bridge? <laughs> I like that laugh. I like that laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have studied up on my highways yesterday. Um, can I just say I-95? That's all it's I got. E Eastern terminus. Eastern terminus. What is terminus means the end? Yes. End. Eastern Damn, Matthew's giving me a second chance. <laughs> and I'm going to absolutely throw it. Oh, I've driven across this bridge too. Dang. Yeah. That's so crazy. Oh, this was supposed to be the easy one. That's for my hometown. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I really don't know anything. Aren't we just like the best, most We're knowledgeable? Like the best best ever. Ever. I was like thinking last night, I was like, I'm going to do so bad. Um, <laughs> I, only have really I think I would describe you as the most verbose <laughs> contestants. We're literally to win for long distance, for real. We're, we're, we're getting there. Yeah. Um, At least we're adding some entertainment is, for our there's listeners. A... Um, why am I so bad at thinking right now? Um, I guess okay. we're just really good. Okay, so it's not I-95. It's not I-95. I don't know any other ones. Oh, no. Um, uh, Eastern Terminus. That's so silly. 
this is a wait you said this is a is this an interstate highway uh yes oh crap uh i don't know i'm gonna abstain from answering <laughs> actually no i'm gonna just say i-95 that's my answer and i know it's wrong it is wrong uh emma grace do you want to take a guess um throw out a okay. random number sure so eastern terminus so that means it has to go east west and uh, it's kind of isn't dc kind of in the middle of the country right like middle like isn't it in the are, you, are, you, are you saying middle is in like north south yeah wise yeah. okay yes then yes yeah then it should be like a middle range number like 50 <laughs> that's my answer um, well, um, U.S. Route 50 does go through Washington, D.C., but that's not Interstate Highway. We were, we were looking for, actually, it does actually go over the same bridge, though, with Interstate 66. Oh, oh I wasn't going to know that. I don't think I paid attention that much in my highways. <laughs> okay, well, this is I-66. Um, and the official terminus is with Route 29 in but D.C. Everybody's got an easy highway question. Well, maybe, I, maybe this one... Smart. I thought it was pretty easy too. Anyway, uh, is absolutely eating me up. <laughs> yeah, I, I say I, I got that right. Yeah, and Mason barely drives Dang. in DC at least. Anyway, that's beside the point. Question two: The TI eighty six calculator is made by what company whose initials lend lends the device its name? Texas Instruments. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Um, question three, the 20th amendment to the U.S. Constitution changed the date of presidential inaugurations from March 4th to what date? Um, January 20th. That's correct. Um, it also changed the date for the start of the new congressional session from March 4th to January 3rd. Uh, it aimed to reduce the lame duck period between the November general election and when elected officials take office. Question four. The Boxer was what duo's follow-up single to their number one hit, Mrs. Robinson? Simon and Garfunkel. That's correct. Um, it peaked at number seven on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1969. I love those guys. I do too. Oh, and They're I one of my mention, favorite artists of all time also, so that was a good question. <laughs> yeah. Um, I forgot to mention earlier that um, Annie's song, uh, uh, John Denver's uh, single, uh, reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1974. Like, my guy me too I love john, john denver like that's my boy too no john denver's the best and the the only unfortunate thing about being born on january 1st is that <laughs> i missed sharing a birthday with john denver by one day because oh. he's december 30th and the tax write-off you, you missed the tax write-off more too. importantly i was this close to sharing <laughs> a birthday with john denver yeah that was the more important one yeah sure. <laughs> uh and finally question five in 1982 Argentina and the United Kingdom fought a brief war over what archipelago located about 300 miles east of Patagonia? The Falkland Islands. That is correct. Both countries continue to lay claim to the islands, though they operate as a British overseas territory. Oh, finally getting into my area of expertise, <laughs> random obscure island disputes. There you go. See, I do tailor the questions to some yeah, extent. Wait, no, that was a good round besides the highway one. <laughs> If I had studied up, Matthew, if I had studied up, but alas, we had an essay to write last night. <laughs> well, that's the end of round three. So Mason, can you please give us a score update? So this round was also a push. Uh, both contestants got 120 points. So uh, yeah, uh, it's now 200 to 190 in favor of Emma Grace. The difference still being a single question from round one. Wow. All righty. Well, now it is time for round four. So, Mason, can you please tell us the rules? All right, round four. It is the showdown round. Uh, there will be three questions given to both contestants at the same time. Each question is worth 40 points. Uh, lock in your answers somehow, you know, beforehand, and then... Yeah, you can use, yeah. like, the notes app on your phone or something. Okay. Oh, wait. What? Like, he asked the question, and then we We're just have to write it. And then we share it. Yes. Okay. 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 Are we ready? ready? Not yet. I need to open a note. Ready. Okay. No Here cheating. we go. <laughs> Question one. 
larger than the planet Mercury, Titan is the largest moon of what planet? Titan. 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 See, this was the other astronomy question. Oh. <sighs> Big size on this side of the- Big size. <laughs> Big size. I was hoping there'd be like a galaxy question. <laughs> well, um, this is a Milky Way galaxy question. Well, I hate the Milky Way. Mm. They wow. suck. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay. Um. <clears throat> okay. Are we ready? Do we have answers? Um. Yeah. Okay. Emma Grace, what is your answer? It's a Saturn. Okay, Ava. I also said Saturn. Well, it's Saturn. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Titan, hey. is the, Titan is the second largest moon in the solar system, only to Jupiter's uh, Ganymede. Oh my wow. God. Wait, okay, because I originally was like, okay, maybe it's Jupiter, but then last minute, Saturn. I was like, it's probably Saturn. Yeah, this one is Saturn. Question two. Christopher Newport was captain of the largest of the three ships that sailed to, the, to North America and founded what English settlement? Okay. Wait, I need, can I get another like minute to think? Yeah. Not minute, but like 20 seconds. Can you say the question again? Yeah. Christopher Newport was the, was the captain of the largest of, sorry, I, I worded this really weirdly. Christopher Newport was the captain of the largest of three ships that sailed to North America and founded what English settlement? Okay, so you're asking the name of the settlement, not the name of the ship. Correct. I wouldn't have been able to come up with the name of the ship, uh, frankly, though I will tell you what the name of the ship is after we reveal the correct answer. You, you know the names of the three ships? Actually, unless this is like, the wrong time in history. Not what? Time. You're not going to tell us like what year this is? This is a yield. No. yield moment. This is a round four question, and it's supposed to be more difficult. <laughs> <sighs> John Newport? Christopher Newport. Christopher Newport. Not that that's going to help me. <laughs> Do we have answers? Okay. Yeah, I have an answer. Okay, Thank we'll you. start. Go first so I don't embarrass myself, please. Uh, sure, yeah. Ava, what is your answer? Jamestown. Emma Grace? I said Jamestown, too. It was Jamestown, oh! yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh See, if, if I had told you that it was in 1607, that, that would have given me. Those were the yeah. three ships, yeah. the, like the Santa Ana, the Santa Maria, and then the P. That's Christopher Columbus. That's Christopher Columbus. My B. No, this, so Newport was the captain of the Susan Constant. <laughs> I, knew, I knew I had that one wrong, though. I was like, wait, these ships don't make sense. <laughs> I was like, why do they have why Spanish names? Spanish names? <laughs> I, I don't know. So he was the captain of the Susan Constant. The Mayflower. Yeah. Was that the same that's, thing? No, that's that was the, no. That was the Pilgrims. That was, that was yeah. Yeah, that was Plymouth. Um, the other two ships were the Discovery and oh. Godspeed. Oh, yeah. More like British names, babes. Yeah, yeah. No, his lasting legacy, of course, being the fact that there is now a city in Virginia named for the fact that that was where he brought news from England. Hence the name Newport News, Virginia. Yeah. Um, and it's he's also the namesake of um, the uh, university, which is located in Newport News, uh, Christopher Newport University, um, which is the alma mater of several former contestants and and at least one question writer yeah it also some Not freakishly green grass <laughs> i haven't been to the i campus. i've been to the campus and yeah. i can attest grass I've, freakishly I've green like no <laughs> well good to know um yeah if any cnu graduates would like to comment on the the vibrancy of the color green in the grass on you know, the university <laughs> Um, please feel free to write us. Um, anyway, finally, the last question. Question three. Uh, known for her roles in Lady Bird and Little Women, what, what actress is the second youngest person to accrue four Academy Award nominations? 
I think perhaps both of you know the correct answer. Um, I'm Grace. Sersha? Sersha Ronan. Yes, that's correct. Um, it, 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 it you just wrote sours. <laughs> it corrected the sources. sources. <laughs> Uh, no, that's wrong, Emma Grace. Uh, no, we, we just no. no, you both get credit. Uh, Shersha Ronan. Um, uh, she was nominated for Best Actress for her roles in Brooklyn, Lady Bird, and Little Women, having previously been nominated for Best Supporting Actress for her role in Atonement. Ooh. Jennifer Lawrence is the youngest person to amass four Academy Award nominations. Wow. So. Well, um, it, it took a little while, but that is the end of the game. <laughs> So Mason, can you please give us the, the final fact, score? Like the fact that we stayed like head and head is crazy. Yeah, no, uh, round th round four was also a push. Uh, 120 <laughs> points apiece for both contestants again. Oh. Yeah. Um, so the final score by a count of 320 to 310, I think the closest score we've had at ever. Mm, uh, no. Emma Grace is our no, that's winner. Not that's not, is that true? Have we had a five point margin? No, we Wait, had have a tie. Have you guys ever had a tie? What oh. do you do if there's a tie? Oh, we, right, we've yeah. had one tie, um, and actually it was uh, Jeremy. Jeremy was on that episode. Um, uh, Jeremy and uh, our friend Tao Xing, who was Harvey Mudd class of 2019. Wow. Um, and I believe they tied at 250 apiece. This was way wow. back in the first year of the podcast. And I think we just decided to leave it a tie. And actually, I believe we said that we'd have a rematch to decide the winner, but that hasn't happened. Um, so um, Hao Xing, Jeremy, if you're listening, um, we should we should uh, do that <laughs> at some point. But at any rate, yes, Emma Grace, uh, you are the winner. It is a very very close game. Uh, so well oh, done. Wait, wait. Good game. Good game. Good game. Uh, do you have anything that you would like to say? Um, I would like to thank Ava for bringing the energy today. <laughs> I would, My coffee really really pumped me up. <laughs> I would, uh, you know, I feel like this win was the you know, the only way that I could get over um, the great disappointment I know that Matthew feels for how badly we have. <laughs> so I'm going to come away feeling, you know, feeling like this was a win and not a complete embarrassment. <laughs> so thanks for having us, Matthew. <laughs> yeah. Can I speak as the loser? <laughs> uh, pl uh, please. My thoughts on this. Um, I'm proud of Emma Grace and I for staying so close. I feel like this really demonstrates both our incompetency, but also <laughs> the areas which we do have competence. Um, I, I don't know. I kind of killed it in round three. Like, dang, yeah. that was kind of crazy. Besides the highway question, which is going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Anyway, no, and like, that ended really, up we really embarrassed ourselves with the Shakespeare ones. Yeah. <laughs> that one kind of, that one was rough. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize that when you said Shakespeare that that was going to be the round, the category for the entire round. So I was like, okay, at least like my girl Emma Grace, like all <laughs> like history girly probably has read some Shakespeare. And then when it came back around to me, I was like, dang. Yeah. Well, sometimes oh. I do, sometimes I do different categories for the two contestants, but more, um, more often recently, I've been doing the same category. Um, yeah, it just, it's, it's just how I'm feeling on a week to week basis. So. Yeah, but uh, well done, both of you. Actually, your your scores are are really quite good. Um, breaking three hundred. Oh my god! Wait, yeah, like what is like the highest scores that people have gotten in the game? Um, um, okay, our highest score was from our episode on December eighth, twenty twenty one. Um, mm -hmm. Matthew Brown. Uh, oh my god! Classic. And he that scored. Makes sense. He scored three hundred and ninety five. My like Matthew Brown, that's insane. But we've we've never had anybody break four hundred. Wow. And maybe we'll have to go on again and try and yeah. really yeah. really study. <laughs> yeah, no, I I could have broken 400 if not for Matthew's collusion with those questions. Well, I can't I I mean I, Anna I Cleves. I mean Well, we're still bitter about that. But that's, drama. Uh well yeah. I, I don't know what to tell you, Mason, because mm -hmm. I, I I can't let you win. Anyway. <laughs> I think we need to end the show because it's gone on for far too long. No, so literally, it's gone on for almost an hour and a half. I, I, I told you it was going to take 45 minutes because normally it takes 45 minutes. Um, 
and we're. I think we're this almost... is now the longest episode. Oh no, we, we've 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 surpassed the longest. Wait, episode. and yeah, that's no. the win for us. We're just out here setting our wins. Win. Yeah. Um, we if embarrass you're... ourselves, but we won. Yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> if you are still <laughs> listening. Overall winners. Thank you. Truly. Um. Anyway. That's that's our show for this week, folks. If you've made it this far, then you're you're a real we one, you. um, and we really appreciate you. Um, thank you, Emma Grace and Ava, for being on the show today, as well as Mason Cook for being our scorekeeper and also for composing the music and also writing some of the questions. And I wrote all the questions that Mason did not write. Uh, and uh, thank you for listening. Uh, please like and subscribe to Trivia Over Tea on your preferred podcast platforms and leave us a review if you enjoyed it. And check out our Facebook and Instagram pages at Trivia Over Tea, as well as our Twitter account, which is also at Trivia Over Tea. If you would like to support th this podcast, uh, you may make a donation, either a one-time donation or uh, buy a membership on buymeacoffee.com slash Trivia Over Tea. And tune in next week when we'll have two new contestants and 33 more fantastic questions. So thank you. We will see you next week.